Hi, Sergeant Trigg. I'm A1C English Lawson. Um, I'm doing my um, interview for leadership class, uh, Management 4111. Um, we just have a few questions to ask you. Um, so starting off, um, as being a leader, do you, do you find yourself using stories to compel people in order to like kind of get a mission accomplished through you stories? Or what is, or a better question would be, I guess, well, no, let me just, let me stop that. Let me stop. I would say yes. Um, I like to, anything that I'm asking of my guys, I like to make it one, relatable, um, help them understand why we're doing something. And usually I would bring up a situation from when I was an airman that may correlate to what I'm asking of them. Um, I always think it's important to show um, your subordinate that you are also human. Yeah, so that's if I'm asking something of you, I'm not going to ask you something if I wouldn't do it myself. Um, so I like to... I like to keep it open and honest and as transparent as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any examples? Mm, let's see, let's see. So when we were gearing up for the deployment, um, there were a lot of long hours mm -hmm. that were basically demanded of us. Um, one, showing my guys that I'm also here in the trenches with you. Two, um, giving them an example of when I was an airman, what was also asked of me. And um, like how you accomplished it. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, kind of give them a back story of any trials and tribulations that we may have ran into, um, how we can overcome it with this previous deployment. Um, so things like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is, um, do you have a vision that you try to portray to um, subordinates and also um, higher up? Or if you have a vision, what is your vision that you see? I guess it would be not necessarily a vision, more so standards. Um, I try to operate and have my guys operate at a high standard mm -hmm. um obviously nothing that's unrealistic right. but do your best is what i'm asking you to do um okay so, so that i think that's my overall goal i don't expect perfection mm -hmm. just do your best okay and then that was going to be my kind of it kind of ties into the next question um your mission so like mm -hmm. your vision is like mm -hmm. what do you see the what do you see the 335th squadron mm -hmm. as you know, mm -hmm. 10 years from now mm -hmm. and then your vision your mission mm -hmm. is like what's what's like what's your pitch or mm -hmm. what is kind of like like a slogan or like a phrase like what's your like and it, and it sounds like you said you want your airmen to do their absolute best absolutely absolutely so, yes um always so your wanna... mission would be do your best Absolutely. Okay. Um, always want to, me personally, I always want to leave a section better than what I found it. Um, so whatever that may entail, maybe process improvement, maybe um, maybe making the work center look better, um, maybe having a different dynamic, a different flow, whatever the yeah. case is, um, trying to improve whatever I can. And I ask my guys to do the same. Right, that is so something that we had in the book mm. that we had read in the textbook. Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Nice. Leave it better than what you found. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Oh, and then this is a really good one. Mm -hmm. Um, why did you take on leadership role? I feel like I feel like I'm a natural leader, so it wasn't something that I had to think about. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I've always, like, I don't have an issue following, um, but I think I'm better suited to be in a leadership position. Um, 
I love seeing my guys thrive. I love seeing them grow, which is pretty much my reward as a leader, right? Like, I don't need you to um, put on this fancy facade. No, I need to show me what's your accomplishment because that's going to make me happy. Um, so I think that I feel like I was kind of just my personality and just my work ethic kind of like determined hey you're probably better suited to be in a leadership position I'm, I'm curious ma'am um, what are what were some of those aspects of yourself that kind of made you come to that conclusion ma'am I would say for one I love taking care of other people okay um I love seeing them um, grow to become better airmen, to become great supervisors, um, even outside of the military. If you become civilian, let me see what you're going to do. Because I, I just want to see people thrive in life, um, even on a personal standpoint. Yeah. Um, so taking on, I, call, I tell them all the time, y'all are my babies. Like, I'm going to take care of you, whatever you need from me. So I think I think that's the biggest thing for me. Like, that's kind of how I was like, okay, yeah, let me, let me get in this leadership position because I've been in a position where my leadership didn't take care of me. Mm-hmm. It sucks. And now that leads me to my next question, mm-hmm. which I think you're already going on the way to there, is uh, what do you wish to accomplish as a leader? I would say... Because, I mean, you've reached tech sergeant, Mm -hmm. which takes a Mm -hmm. lot of time for a lot of people. It does. It does. Mm. I don't know. That's that's a tough one. Me, personally, I don't... What kind of change? Maybe that could be a better way of asking. What kind of change are you trying to accomplish? For sure, I want there to be a better cohesion with leadership and... The airmen. Okay. We got a lot of unnecessary turmoil in LRS. Um, a lot of it stems from the senior NCOs, um, which makes it difficult for us, techs and staffs, to get the airmen to buy in when they see that the flight is dysfunctional. Mm. So I think <clears throat> that is the overall goal. Like we, we need to become a better team. We're a better team in the section, but that needs to now trickle out to the flight and the squadron. Because we all are different places, different priorities. Yeah. It just causes unnecessary chaos. There was something in the book that um, they talked about getting people involved mm-hmm. for presumably cohesion. Mm-hmm. They talked about um, doing like ceremonial kind of things mm-hmm. where um, it's like, like something that the, our squadron commander does. Oh, really? Where you know when we have the um like the cookouts. Oh we yes, have, yes, I love like, those. Like those um cafes. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think it's something that you can also do with um your own section too, absolutely. right? Absolutely, absolutely. You want to do like a sport day. Or yes, something, you know? absolutely yeah. for sure. Because typically when you guys have like cafes and stuff like that, we'll usually do training because that's necessary. But we'll also maybe do bowling or whatever the guys want to do. Yeah. I think that is important to boost morale like that if you're happy with your leadership with your team coming into work won't be so miserable that's true it it won't be as hard for you for me to get you to buy in because we have this this rapport this positive rapport where it'll it'll make you want to come to work when you have a good leadership yeah. on your team so what are what are some of the things you do to reach um more difficult employees mm. we don't say employees mm. we say mm-hmm. <laughs> i think uh a lot of uh mentoring sessions um and then it's a lot of i like to use my own personal like um, situations to kind of connect to people. Mm-hmm. So if I see someone is having a hard time adjusting to whatever the case is, um, 
I like to give them an example of how I also struggled, as well as how I overcame that. Um, it, it, it definitely takes time and patience. Um, I think that's a very important piece as a leader. Okay. Um, it takes great listening skills. It takes um, effective communication. Um, and I think that's that that's typically my tactic. Let me let me sit down and see where you're out where you're where you are outside of work. Because nine times I'm saying if you're going some, going through something outside of work, you're gonna bring it to work. Mm-hmm. So excluding the issues I'm having with you at work, what's going on in your personal life that we may need to address? Yeah. So then we can have a better day at work. So try to go with that angle. Okay. Thank you for that, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And then, um, have you ever had to combat to- toxic culture? And if so, then how did you deal with it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'd say half my career was dealing with that. It's tough, especially when you don't have people to back you. So, as a staff and as a tech, I feel like the more stripes I've earned, the bigger my voice got. So, right now, if I see some toxic, oh, you can't tell me to be quiet. I'm going to say what I need to say. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to fix what I can. Um, cause leadership y'all have empowered me to do so when y'all gave me right. the tech strike right so i'm going to utilize that whether it goes against your your beliefs your morals whatever the case is if i feel differently we will have a conversation about it you will always voice yourself absolutely absolutely now i do believe there's a time and a place to do so okay um so maybe not right now in that moment depending on what's going on but at some point, it will be addressed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it does say that, like, it's better for you to, like, pull someone aside mm-hmm. in private, mm-hmm. maybe later when they calm down, Absolutely. and then tell them, hey, that we're going to pay, this is how you do it, this is what happens. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then, um, what do you think our, I think you already touched on this, you said our organizational culture should be more cohesive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, do you have any slogans? <laughs> uh, I do have something that I say quite often um, to kind of get my guys to boost maybe morale or whatever the case is. I'll be real quick to tell somebody to tighten up, right? Like, okay. come on, man, let's get it together, right? Um, and it's not to tear anybody down. It's just to tell you, hey, I know we can do better. So let's do better. Um, there's something called managing up. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes we have difficult bosses, mm-hmm. or in your case, it will be a difficult master sergeant mm-hmm. or a senior master sergeant to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any like techniques or strategies you use for managing managing up? Yes. So for me, I think what gets What's been a a good approach for me is regulating my tone and kind of, and verbiage, I would say, right? Um, Because when you're dressed in senior leadership, sometimes they're stuck in their ways, right? So I have to... Whatever I'm vocalizing, I have to say it in the way that will get them to understand. So that also ties into knowing your people. So if I know person A is different from person B, I have to approach them in different ways. Right. So my biggest thing, because I know I can come off as aggressive sometimes, so, and that's not what I want to portray if I'm trying to get someone to understand. So let me work on me. Let me make sure my tone, my verbiage is effective to where mm-hmm. you can hear me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what about handling, micromanaging, um, uh, upper level management, those above you? 
that was kind of what's looming over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. See everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. You get constant updates. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how do you handle that? Mm, most of the time, I have it dealt with that. Most of the time, I don't have to say anything um, because my work will speak for itself. You're gonna see that I don't need you to micromanage. There has been a time where I did have to say something, and that was a side conversation um, that almost got here. Um, only because their personality was a micromanaging type of personality. Where mine is, I'm going to get frustrated if you micromanage me. Yes. I don't need you to do that. What did you do to deviate it, ma'am? So it, it took restraint on my end, right? So to again, watch my tone, watch how I'm coming off. Um, it took for me to compose myself so that, so in that case, I had to take five, give me a second, let me get my, yeah. my thoughts together, yeah. and then I'm going to reattach. Okay. Um, moving yourself in a position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was just a, hey, supervisor, I understand you want to make sure things get done. I'm going to make sure I protect you and ensure that these suspenses are getting met. So trust me enough to know that whatever you give me is going to get done. Copy. And you had to tell them mm -hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, hey, you can trust me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, are there any mantras you tell yourself in the morning? Honestly, no. Not really. Um, Perhaps. Perhaps there's something you say to yourself when you're feeling a little bit down at work to get yourself to get into the back. No, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, Anything you do? I normally go talk to my peers. Um, but as far as myself, what I do to get myself out of that funk, I'm still working on it. Um, so I don't, I don't really have an answer for that one. That's okay. Yeah. Um, and then you meant, I had a question, you mentioned about knowing your leaders, mm -hmm. but I want to know what are some of the things you do or say to get to know them? Like what are some of the questions you ask or do you go out to dinner or do mm -hmm. you go work out with mm -hmm. them or like how do you kind of go into that? For someone like me who's mm -hmm. like awkward. No, I feel you. I feel you on that one. Um, usually, like, maybe new leadership come in, we'll do the initial, hey, how are you, where are you coming from? Later on, um, once we start working together, that's when I'll usually come out and say, hey, like, how long you been in? Do you have any suggestions in this area? Do you have, um... Do you have any children? Are you married? Whatever case is, that's when the personal questions come into play. But I don't typically initiate that until we build some type of work relationship. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But I do like to get to know my senior leaders because I want to know how you think. Right. I want to know how you operate. So you can get them what they need mm -hmm. to know that mm -hmm. you're, you're, doing, you're doing your job efficiently. Absolutely. Um, and then is is it hard to reveal struggles or any kind of um, temporary inadequacy with upper level management? Just like, hey, I'm actually struggling with this new system in the computer and I need some assistance with that. So. Because I do. I struggle with that. So overall, no. But it also depends on the leader. Okay. If the leader is closed off, then I'm not going to say nothing. I don't feel comfortable talking to you. Most of the time, I don't have an issue with that. Um, so I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know everything. I need assistance. I've tried on my own. I've looked in the race. I've done this. I've done that. I need your help. Um, shoot, honestly, I'll reach out to my staff. I'll reach out to my airmen. Hey, do you guys know how to work this? Because I've never seen it. So I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Um, mm. unless that senior feel is just like not listening. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, I'm wasting my time here. Let me go find another senior feel. Okay. 
That's something to definitely mm -hmm. think about. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, I just have two more questions. In our squadron, um, okay, so I'm going to ask you a question about our squadron. Mm -hmm. and, and then about, um, there's something in the book called a hierarchy of, hierarchy of needs. Okay. So the hierarchy of needs, um, there's physiological, there's safety, belongingness, um, self-esteem, and self-actualization. So okay. physiological needs is at the bottom, mm -hmm. safety and belongingness are above that, and then you have esteem, like feeling like you, you, you have value, okay. and then self-actualization, self which is like becoming the type of person you want to become, which is okay. at the top. Okay. Um, in our squadron, what do you think is the strongest? And I can go down at the bottom these last five ones. Which ones do you think would be the strongest of our, of our people? I would say, and what was the self-actualization -act again? What was the definition of that one? Um, this is the, um, okay, so what it means is you are trying to become, like, like for me, mm -hmm. my self-actualization would be, I want to become a more outspoken person, okay. I want to speak with a louder voice, okay. I want to have more confidence, I want to be more proficient in my job, I want to be efficient. Okay. That's and I want to be more, um, I want to be more financially stable. I want okay. to, like all of these things that I want to become. Mm -hmm. I want to become more of a leadership person or figure in our squadron. Gotcha. I don't want gotcha. To be where I am right now. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And honestly, I would say that might be the biggest thing within the unit. Um, because I talk to your leadership a lot. Um. And they have, they have goals, they have aspirations for not only themselves, but the unit, for the airmen. So it seems like everybody has a goal to reach. Mm -hmm. You think you're on the different pages? I do, at times. Okay. At times. I do feel like some of y'all are on different pages. Um, it seems like the biggest gap is between the senior NCOs and the staff and tech. It seems like the staff and tech and the airmen, y'all good. Y'all on the same page. Mm -hmm. But once it gets, gets past there, it seems like um, it kind of switches. Where there may be a hiccup in communication, it may be, I'm not sure what it is, but it does, I, I do see that lapse from the senior NCOs down to the staff and tech. How do you think we could fix that? Honestly, I think. It's, it's gonna come from the senior NCOs. It, it has to start with them. Okay. Um, I think they need to be more transparent. Okay. Um, what they want from us. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as even like even just being like more open, because there 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 are times where I've witnessed. An individual would try to go to the CNTOs, and it's very almost like a cold shoulder. So then, that makes it harder on the next occasion if the airmen actually do need to come talk to you guys. So I think that those aspects is something that they need to work on. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, man. Yeah, of course. Um, that was pretty much the last. Okay.